We have a very special guest joining us in the studio. We see him about once every oh, month and a half or so. Uh, he's in the uh, what we call the, the rotation, and that is uh, the rotation that we have set up with the various members of the Twin Falls City Council. And in this form of government, of course, one of those members is the mayor, and that is Don Hall. And first of all, welcome back to the show today. Well, thank you, Bill. It's a pleasure to be here. We have 57. Uh, you probably driving in noticed it was a little chilly this morning, so... Uh, it was, it was, we'll, we'll but it's going to get up. warm. Yeah, we'll warm things up today. <laughs> uh, coming up on eight minutes after nine o'clock, this is Top Story with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. Uh, before we get to the controversial subject, um, we still are going through budget hearings. We'll get that out of the way right away. Um, right. And once again, I was talking to one of your colleagues, well, I've talked to several of your colleagues about this. There is tremendous disappointment that Every Monday afternoon, people have an opportunity to come in and comment about just about anything under the sun. Um, you'll get hours of testimony on a small issue, such as backward parking on one street. <laughs> and yet, when it comes to spending millions of dollars, you get very little input from members of the public, and you're still trying to get that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we made the conscious decision that every time that we speak about the budget, we open it up to the public. I'm the mayor, so I open it up and say, anyone want to come up and make any comments? Uh, and, and we treasure the input from the citizens because we're spending their money. This is their, it's my money too, because I'm a citizen as well, but we're spending their money on priorities through our strategic plan that was developed by the community. Um, but we would love to have them come and review. You know, I certainly understand in today's age, we're all so busy. We've got so many irons in the fire and we're going 10 different directions with our kids and, and work and education, all those things. But again, please, please come. We would love to hear your input. And, and. One thing that I think we hear often, and I, I mentioned this last week uh, during the segment, is you'll get voters after the fact who will come in and say, why are we doing this? Why is this happening? And so they really have to go out. You know, if, if you're going to participate or you're going to later complain, you have to get active you do. and educate yourself on exactly what this is all about. You do. Yeah. And, and again, you know, probably one of the more important things that your city council does is um, the budget. Because, again, we're utilizing those funds to uh, move forward priorities within the city, whether that's uh, new roads or maintenance of roads or new treatment plants or, or, or parks or whatever. And uh, it's so important to hear from them. Now, on the, the subject that has become almost the subject du jour, at least in some corners of the community, uh, last night there was a, a large gathering at uh, one of the local churches, and I guess the night before in Filer, to, uh, to hear a visiting pastor who was uh, talking about uh, what he feels are the dangers of, of trying to integrate Islam into a community. Uh, you have a public be heard section of your meetings. We were talking about this just before the show, uh, before we, we, we went on air during the newscast today. Um, so I, I, I would guess that because of the public concern that you're seeing people coming in in droves and expressing that at council meetings, is that the case? That, that is not the case. I know that myself and several other council members have received emails and, and, and maybe some phone calls. I probably would classify that between a half a dozen and a dozen that I personally received um, regarding this, maybe a little more, um, but no one to the council meeting. And, and, and yet there was an invitation, I guess, sent out to government officials to at least attend a luncheon with this pastor yesterday and uh, and, and essentially, they ate lunch alone. Uh, is is there an effort in government uh, to just basically sort of try to brush people like him aside? Well, I, I don't know. I can only speak for myself. Uh, this has not been a subject that I've uh, that's been on our agenda at the council meetings. I can only speak for myself. I know that I received something in email about him coming, but I didn't realize it was a lunch, and I thought it was just his event okay, last to, night. Okay. So, so, and, and I, I could be wrong, but I don't remember being invited as a government official to any luncheon with him. Okay. And I'm not sure that it was a luncheon. I know that there was a meeting of some sorts yesterday, and I assume that they would serve lunch if they wanted to bring oh, people out. Yeah. So, so when, when you're hearing from people, are, are they distressed, and what can you tell them? I mean, is there anything the city... It, it, well, yeah, I, I think you, you get varying degrees of distress uh, regarding this. And I guess I, the first thing I want to say is that I, I certainly understand the concern. Um, the whole radical Islam, ISIS, terrorism issues that we're seeing worldwide, and including in the United States, um, is very distressing, very concerning to me. 
Um, but I try to uh, measure my response as a human being, frankly, uh, uh, with are there radical wings of these folks out there? Absolutely. I mean, it's easy to find. But I also will want tell you that I personally have friends <laughs> that are Muslims in this community. I, I, I have colleagues that are Muslims that mm -hmm. are in this community. Mm -hmm. And uh, for full disclosure, I work for CSI as a, a law enforcement uh, director of their program. And uh, I have had refugees that have come through my program that are now active police officers within our community, serving our community. And, and there's probation officers and nurses um, that have all come through this refugee uh, program and are contributing members of our society and our community. So I, I just try to balance all of that. And, you know, and I'll mention too as well, when I worked in television years ago, my best friend in, uh, in the office was... Uh, his, his father was Pakistani, his mother was Turkish, and uh, he'd grown up in a Muslim family. At, at the time, the two of us probably didn't pay a whole lot of attention to religious faith. Maybe we do as we get older. Right. Uh, but but I do know that, uh, that 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 there's a there's a group out here in the community that believes they're just they're simply not being heard, and and maybe that's hmm. really what this all comes down to. Maybe it's not so much opposition, uh, but is there a better way? For, for government, local governments, to communicate with these people than perhaps with via email invitations and the like or something along those lines. Because sometimes, as you pointed out, through email, things can get, they can fall through the cracks and, and you know, you lose track of things in the like. Well, the other thing I try to do with email is use it limited, you know, very limited, because you don't have any tone inflections or facial expressions through email. So you don't know what the other person's truly, because, because again, communication is is what 80 percent body language mm -hmm. <laughs> and and so i would rather sit down in fact i had an email this morning while i was out in the parking lot i responded to a gentleman that has concerns about it i said uh, if you ever want to sit down and talk about it i'd be more than happy i'd like i'd hear your perspective the city from what i understand cannot put its foot down and say no because this agreement was done so long ago and it was done by governments that you know it, it all comes downhill when you're talking yeah about it comes government. from the federal government sure and so when the state entered into the agreement, there's not really, you, you can't throw up a barrier on the streets and say, don't come here. No, I mean, that, that's obviously not practical, and, and that's not something I would support, frankly, either. Um, I, I, think that, I think the dialogue is good. I think that we need to discuss this. We need sure. to understand uh, what the vetting process of, of, of folks coming into our country is. And I think that's probably the, where we're seeing most of the controversy is because we don't understand or know what the vetting process is because maybe we're not being given that on a federal level. I know locally uh, going out and talking, I personally went out and talked. I grabbed our city manager and our uh, uh, deputy city manager from our uh, um, public safety, and we went out and talked to Zay Zay when this when we first heard the controversy about the Syrian issue and uh, out at the refugee center. And he walked us through the process that he went through, frankly, um, and how long they had to be in refugee camps and um, that they are outcasts, if you will, from these communities. They're the oppressed. These mm -hmm. are folks that have nothing <laughs> when they get here. Family members have been murdered. Businesses have been taken away from them. No homes. And so he walked us through that, and that gave us a better sense of exactly what's happened. But I think really, I, I think I'm dominating this but i think really really where the controversy is is it's it's a political controversy who is in who's at the helm of the ship right now the administration compared to who used to be and what your political persuasion is if if there was someone there i'm i tend to be a conservative republican personally okay if there was someone at the helm, in the room right now okay, yeah um but I, I i love to use the word compassion because i have it I, I i understand and i and i I have compassion for human beings. But if, if there was a conservative Republican at the helm, I would be less concerned Okay, than when there is someone that's maybe of the other persuasion. I mm -hmm. think that's a lot of what's going on in our Yeah, we don't society. maybe have quite the same type of watchdog effort going on. We don't have the same level of trust, I think, is, is a lot of it. We have only about three minutes to go. Don Hall is uh, our guest in studio, mayor of Twin Falls, uh, joining us today on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Uh, 58 right now, coming up on 917. Before we do wrap up, for a lot of people on a completely different topic, uh, I notice outside my house we're going to have uh, some paving done on the street. Okay. 
And uh, do we have a, a place we could go and discover, look up paving schedules? Yes. Uh, on our website, you would be able to see uh, exactly what's going on. And if it's not clear to you there, there's phone numbers that you can talk, contact the city. And we will walk you through that. Because obviously, when we talk about paving and uh, uh, chip sealing and all those things, those can be very disruptive. I need okay. to know when I, I have to move the car. Yeah, the move the car. Or maybe you want to not go down that road right now because they're doing uh, chip sealing. May I say one more thing about the refugee? Uh, sure. I, uh, two years ago, or about three years ago, I was invited to the Muslim uh, um, center here in, in town. Um, for Ramadan, and frankly, I didn't know what Ramadan was. I know it's it's a it's a sacred thing for uh, Muslim, uh, and the the uh, I was invited as the mayor, and it was a warm um, reception that I got. I, I got a tour of their center. Um, I found it fascinating talking to the different folks that were there from all over the world. Sometimes you have this preconceived notion. Mm -hmm. Who, who a Muslim is, <laughs> okay. but right, it's not. Right. It's, it's every nationality, every race, every, uh, um, and, and again, I, 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 and I've been in the audience with listening to their, the local imam, and he preaches peace over and over again. Um, so that's been my experience locally. We have a caller with us. We'll try to squeeze the caller in before the break. Uh, nope, I think our caller decided to... We'll try one more line. You're on the air at 918 with Mayor Don Hall. Um, hi. I'm on the air now? Yes. Okay. Um, I have a question about this backflow testing. Um, I got a letter. It's been on the, on the book since 1999, but all of a sudden it's a big emergency that uh, we have to have our residential sprinkler systems tested for backflow and it's going to be an every year thing we got about 30 seconds and this is coincidental to the uh, syrians to a big influx of refugees and it seems to me like that this is a just a jobs program for the csi uh refugees well 30 seconds okay that is not correct it's a totally different subject the refugee uh, situation has nothing to do with the backflow we are just fulfilling our obligation when it comes to groundwater uh and, um, and drinking water safety and again uh if you have any questions about backflow just show up at a council meeting absolutely all right. We want to thank you for coming by today. Uh, you're the first person I know in local government who's uh, who's talked about this subject, and uh, you weren't shy about it. Well, thank you, Bill. I, and and I will talk to anyone about it anytime. I was going to say, conservative Republican law enforcement, yeah, shy is not part of his makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Twin Falls Mayor Don Hall joining us in studio this morning. It's 59, coming up on 920. Hey, I want to tell you a story about some people in a local community who have been trying or are accused of trying to poison dogs and cats. Uh, that's on the way in just a few minutes.